In the textile industry, the major health hazard is cotton dust. Cotton comes into the mill in big 500-pound bales. Now, unfortunately, this bale consists of not just the raw cotton, which has to be spun into yarn, but leaves and dirt that's accumulated in the harvesting process. And these leaves and dirt break into very fine dust in the process of opening the bales and the early operations of carding the, the fine fibers and spinning the yarn. As a result, there's a very fine dust emitted and that exists in the air in the cotton mill. It causes people to cough and it causes breathlessness. And eventually, after long exposure, it causes total disability due to what is popularly known as brown lung disease, technical name being vicinosis, disease of the lungs, which is crippling and ultimately can cause early death. OSHA had adopted a standard to protect workers from brown lung disease by limiting the amount of cotton dust in the air. But in 1973, some Canton workers felt their plant wasn't meeting the standard. The cotton dust was bad, and you couldn't see when you opened the doors. It, it all fogged in your face, and you can't breathe in it. I go in there, and when I come out, you could tell it. You could feel the tighten of your chest, you know. And it take you a while to breathe, you know, get your breathing back normal. You worked in there a while to feel like you'd been eating dirt or something. One of those workers complained to the local OSHA office and asked for an inspection of the mill. We were there uh, as a result of a complaint and uh, about these uh, conditions and uh, found them to be true and, and cited them uh, for these and gave them a period of time to abate. We felt like that they could come into it in a relatively short period of time by improving ventilation. And we gave them six months to correct the first violation on cotton dust, but they were unable to do that. Our first attempt at dust removal equipment was one where we spent about $200,000, and it didn't bring the dust level down. Since the company couldn't meet the OSHA standard in the time permitted, they asked for, and OSHA granted, a series of extensions. Each of our abatement periods, as I remember them, was uh, uh, for a year's extension from the original. About this time, the workers' union challenged these delays. The OSHA did approve an additional extension of one year for the company to meet the standard, making it the fall of 76. Well, before that uh, fall of 76 came around, we were determined to, to see to it that no additional delays occurred. The disagreements between the company, the workers, OSHA, and the union were finally resolved when the company came forward with a new plan to meet OSHA's standard. And this plan was different from the old in that they specified exactly what machinery they had intended to buy. They uh, provided a uh, guarantee by the machinery manufacturer that if this equipment were installed, the cotton dust standard would be met. The installation of the new equipment produced dramatic results. As a result of what we've done, it appears that we can conservatively say that we have improved our dust conditions by tenfold or possibly fifteenfold. This case is important in that it demonstrates what can be done when you have an active local union that is aware of its rights under the law and the coordination of the international union and the local union to assure that the workers get the rights uh, vindicated. OSHA made all the difference in the world. If, 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 it, if these companies didn't have someone to set standards they have to go by, they would just do what they want to. That's the best thing that happened to the working people when OSHA came involved. It cost Canton Mills almost a million dollars to reduce the levels of cotton dust and meet OSHA's regulation. But by doing so, the company has protected the health of its workers for many years to come. Very often in concentrating on the apparent cost of achieving the regulation, we lose sight of the cost of not regulating at all. In the case of cotton dust, for example, there are 40,000 documented cases of respiratory disease caused by exposure to cotton dust in the textile industry. That is a tremendous expense, not only to those workers and their families, but to society as a whole. Workers are being injured. Workers are being diseased. They're losing their livelihood. They're having to have medical exams, medical care, which is very expensive. These costs are being borne by the workers who are the victims of occupational injuries and diseases, and society in providing medical care and relief for these people who are impoverished as a result of their victimization. 